Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all let's all go to the Know that the ride or die. I keep boys by my seat. Know that the ride or die. I keep boys by my What is up, guys? Welcome back to another odd popcorn for that review. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. And today we are here with a, a doozy of a movie. Uh, so this is the newest movie by Eddie Alcazar and uh, produced by Steven Soderbergh. And it is called Divinity. And Divinity is a movie that almost defies explanation. It is certainly an independent movie. Um, and I think there's there's positives and negatives here. So uh, what's the first thing that comes up to you as far as a positive for this? Uh, I guess just like the ending scene. The like ending fight scene was really cool. It was like a, mm -hmm. a claymation stop motion fight while the other the whole rest of the movie is live action. That's yeah, probably the best part of the of... movie to me. I no, I totally agree with you. And I wish I could think of what movies they're directly referencing, but there's like some old uh, stop motion classics that I think they're kind of directly referencing here. And I think they did actually do a good job with that. Yeah. And the aesthetic here is certainly a hard choice. Like they took a big swing and you know, it's almost like it's uh it's... the weirdest perfume commercial I've ever seen. <laughs> a lot of that. Yeah. So it's shot in 16 millimeter black and white but it's almost like deep fried black and white so everything's just burnt to black yeah so there's a lot of just blackness where you don't get a lot of definition and it actually is kind of cool looking and it's there's a lot of visual noise and i think they do probably use that to sort of soften the edges of a kind of a low budget set and everything but i think it for the most part that works the aesthetic kind of you know you can sink into the aesthetic and there's kind of a cool thing they do at night where the it's almost like night vision because of how bright the stars are i thought that was kind of a cool yeah. look like um, the cinematography and the shots were really cool and the set design was really cool uh mm -hmm. it's visually very trippy and and yeah you know uh certainly an artistic take on a movie Oh, the but, opening scene was really cool, too, and, like, the two guys, like, climb out of the ground because they just, like, do it all weird. I guess maybe that was kind of stop motion as well. Yeah, yeah. The ending that you were talking about a second ago did kind of remind me of, like, bring me back to that moment where I was like, why do they look so, you know, it's like an intentional thing for sure, you can tell. Yeah, and just that, that whole scene where they, like, drop, like, almost like stars or, like, they're just dropping so rapidly to Earth. And uh, and then they climb out of this like glowing hole. That was that was a kind of a cool shot. There's a lot of like interesting looking things in here. But and if you think of more positives, I, you know, feel free. But uh, what are some things you didn't like about this movie? <laughs> uh, just like the hypersexualness of it, like just jacked dudes everywhere. And when I say that it remind it, that it's like a perfume commercial, that's what mm -hmm. it reminded me of. For mm -hmm. like seventy five percent of the movie, it's just people yep. dancing and doing like uh, droplets of this divinity drug, like it's acid or something. But it's, I guess, kind of the, a little bit of the plot is it, it's this thing that looks like it's in a perfume jar, mm -hmm. but it comes from which Scott Bakula is the dad of Steven Dorf who found I guess this thing. We don't really know what it is. It looks like mm -hmm. it's an ice cube that's hollowed out a little bit and some floating essence is in there and he's like siphoning off the essence and trying to dilute it so they can basically it's an not immortality but uh you it'll you'll live as long as you can unless I you can still die from other things. Well, I think I think his goal is to perfect his dad's di drug divinity to make it an actual immortality drug. So I think that's right. what that that serum is supposed to be, but yeah, yeah like, the, in that in that cube it's like very concentrated. Yeah, cuz he the dad found the way to keep the body young and just jacked at all times. And yeah. I guess the mind still was deteriorating was the issue with it. Yeah, and I guess you, so you don't you don't live forever. You just it gives you longevity and and it's almost like uh taking like hgh or testosterone or something like that but you know to the nth degree but yeah he's trying to turn into this complete immor immortality drug and then we have these two brothers it's two brothers and a, and and they're gonna it's called two brothers two brothers who 
drop from space, like I said earlier. And man. I didn't even notice they dropped from space. I thought they just crawled out of the ground, but yeah. I just must have oh, yeah. not been paying attention. It was, it was, I guess it's like UFOs or, but I don't really think you fully get an explanation here as to Mm-mm. what's going on with them. And that's the story with a lot of this. I feel like there's a lot of, I hate to say it, but it, this is kind of like textbook style over substance. Like this guy would make a hell of a music video, probably, you know, maybe a short film. Like it looks cool, but it's almost like they, they started out with the idea of an aesthetic they wanted to go with and then built a movie around that and forgot to really give much of an interesting plot. And, yeah. and there's also some, there's some acting in here that's pretty suspect. I don't know. <laughs> there's some moments that were like, I think unint- maybe they weren't unintentionally goofy, but there were some moments that were pretty goofy to me. And I, I was kind of having a hard time with some of it. And, and worst case scenario, it gets a little boring from time to time. And it's not even a very long movie. Like the whisper speaking of the, I guess the prostitute. Yeah, that's paid to come over there. Like all her whisper speaking and and all that, and Bella Thorne as the whatever she is. <laughs> I don't I don't know who she is. Like I know the whole. I wish she was the bathwater girl, right? Like so no her, no oh, no, okay. no no different different gal. Yeah, no, she she's like been the... in movies and stuff before, okay. and she does music, and she got her start on like the Disney Channel in like two thousand nine oh, okay. or something. So, but, but... She, does she play like the? goddess of those girls that, okay and yeah I know. and i don't know what that was about and I that mean, was a weird that, side plot that led to the ending basically i guess like she's trying to round up all the fertile women because there's only like 97 percent of the population is infertile so yeah oh yeah to round up all the fertile women but that's the side effect of sh- divinity as it makes you uh sterile in- infertile so she has to you have to be like untouched by that drug to you know, be able to be fertile. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And there might be some weird subtext there where it's like, Oh, women's only purpose is to breathe. I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on here with the, but, but seeing all, all these close-ups of all these Jack dudes flexing and, and semi nude to fully nude women. And it kind of got like pretty gross over time. Right. It's like, it's, it's overkill. I don't know. It just wasn't, it wasn't really my vibe after a while. (laughs) Because <laughs> yeah, even the commercials at the beginning of the movie, it's really like retro futuristic too, where all the computers and stuff he's using look real old timey, but obviously they're well into the future. Yeah, super far into the future, I assume. Yeah, and there's like uh, commercials playing at one point during the movie, and they're all super sexual. Like it's just a girl undressing, there's a girl uh, eating frosted flexies and just pouring and them little... all over herself and dripping milk on her, and like, come on, man. Like the cereal is shaped like a little flexed muscle. Yeah. Flexed bicep. Yeah, I don't know. I just, at some point, I started to think, mm, this is not going to be it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I was excited yeah. when I saw the trailer in theaters. I, I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I should have known it was going to be pretty weird. I think I, I think the trailer came on for me when we saw Winnie Bull lyrics, which mm-hmm. is, they definitely advertise a lot of smaller movies during that, it seemed like. You know, I've said before on here, I love at least a big swing, even if it's kind of a miss. Like, I love a, somebody that takes a big swing. And this is certainly one of those. I just think uh, it's a pretty big miss to, to me. I, 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 can't, I can't really recommend this to anyone. Like, who, who the hell would you recommend this to, you know? I um, mean, if you're good with weird, weird stuff, like on mushrooms, maybe you'd like it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oof. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, th- there is going to be an audience for this, for sure. Uh, well, let's get back into just... these brothers arriving. Too. But let's get back to the brothers because they are they have a strong bond. You don't want to know about it here. Yeah, so the, these brothers arrive and they, um, they tie up the son of Scott Bakula's character, the original creator of Divinity. They tie him up and then they like force inject him with a ton of this very concentrated new form of divinity that hasn't been tested on humans before. Well, They're it, just... No, that's it's not the new one he's made. It's just the straight source of it. It's undiluted okay. straight from the source of whatever that thing was. Okay, okay. Fair enough. But we're. I think we're supposed to... I mean, certainly by the end of it, it feels like they are definitely the good guys of this. But they barely speak. They have these like black tattoos all the way down to their hands. 
with like lettering, like negative space lettering up here that we don't really learn anything about. Yeah. And it seems Some kind like of alien language or something or Yeah, whatever they are, they've just taken this human form for the first time. We hear just like we find out just through some someone just says that that they're like they're human for the first time now. They can like study, like they'll look at like a karate manual or some kind of like jujitsu manual or something like that and just scan over it and it like lights up and highlights and it's it's like they're absorbing all that information. And mm-hmm. it, and they can transfer the information to people too. So like there's a point where that I guess prostitute again, I don't know, she finds the man tied up and is trying to rescue him, and then they are able to like impart all of their knowledge to her, like Doctor Who style. She suddenly knows everything about the brothers, why they're here, why they're in human bodies now, why they've come, what their mission is to come here, everything about uh, Stephen Dorff's character, what he's doing, his intentions, all this. And I was like, I wish they'd fill us in a little more on some, right. some more about the brothers. <laughs> because I don't really fully understand what's going on with them, except that they're supposed to be good. They don't, we just don't get a lot there. They just don't really do a lot with it. I don't know. Yeah, you never that, fully but, figure out what they are either. I mean, whatever they are, they don't have to just be in human form. But like, well, do we go into full spoilers? Yeah, for this one, I think we can, because there's definitely a Let's part at the go. very end I want to talk about. Yeah, let's just go into full spoilers. So one of them gets does get killed, and his spirit like escapes through him like smoke into his other brother, and then ultimately when the other when the other brother gets killed, his spirit is they're both up in the air as ghosts, like holding hands and vanquishing, and I just. Uh, I'm not sure what did the good guys win. I don't know what the. I'm not sure what ultimately the point of that was, except that like something about the universe had to be righted, like they had offset the balance because people live too long now. Yeah. Or something like that. Is that what I'm supposed to? Is that what you got? I don't know what I got, man. That was a trip. <laughs> that ending, man. So yeah, I want to oh. talk about this ending a little bit because it kind of it annoyed me. It so basically the Please. prostitute gets with all these girls that it kind of shows throughout the movie and they have this weird cloaking technology where they either like x-ray and then they become fully seen and they take her into this big white room and she had sex with the two guys so she's pregnant and giving birth already and she gives birth to like a tree with a bunch of dicks for roots that is exactly it yeah and for a second i thought maybe like giant earthworms no those were dicks but no no that wasn't it yeah but and i guess what really yeah, annoyed ahead. me about this scene is it seemed like a straight rip from midsummer because <laughs> all the girls around it's the, like the endings one of the ending scenes of oh. midsummer where he's it, they're crying and everybody's going like ah, ah, with him and they're doing the same thing in this movie it did no. I, I'm I'm so glad you said it. Yeah, no, it did feel like a direct rip off of that. And then because that's a unique scene, I haven't ever seen that in a movie before. It's almost it's, like yeah. iconic at this point, even though it's a relatively recent movie. Like that that has and that soon, you feel like you can't rip that off. As soon as they started to do it, I was just thinking, I really hope they don't do this because it's been done in such a better way in a better movie. So I guess their mission was to impregnate her with this. Fertility tree, maybe? Fertility um, tree to, like, know. replenish the earth with normal people or something like that. I I don't know. I hated that ending. And um, and it and it just cuts to, like, color for a split second, mm-hmm. which I don't know what that does for anyone. Yeah, they lift the uh, dick tree up, cuts to color, credits. The end. Apparently there's a shout-out to Elon Musk at the end of this. I don't know if that was a joke. I, I left the theater when it when credits started rolling. I did too. It is interesting that that scene I hated so much was so so relatively, you know, close to the scene I liked the the most, which you know, which was like we said that stop motion type scene, and it was almost like anime too, like the yeah. the the fast motion, like the motion line, motion blur lines and everything. Yeah, like that scene. I that was the best part of the movie. I think this movie could have been an hour and like 18 minutes shorter. Yeah. And I would I would watch that fight <laughs> scene. <laughs> Not in a theater, you know. Yeah. 
Well, uh, what else, what else you got? I don't really got anything else on this one. I, I guess there was a scene like it. Oh, I guess we should say, uh, the essence that's being mainlined into Stephen Dorff's character's veins turns them him into this grossly like grotesque monstrous monstrous just ripped guy who's his head kind of looks like a penis too yeah his head's like a his head just becomes engulfed with muscle where it's barely recognizable as like i'm not even sure how he can see anymore it's just barely recognizable yeah and that was like another part of the movie i didn't like because at this point he's got this weird like incredibly deep voice that's kind of echoey and there are so many times i was like just put a little subtitles in there if if you're gonna do this because i can't understand what he's saying at all for most of this for a movie this short, so much could have been cut. Like they spend so much time on some slow scenes just to build atmosphere, I guess, and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I, you know the the begin the very beginning was kind of visually interesting mm-hmm. and trippy. You yeah. know, like it's kind of like a. I guess we're I guess we're going through like a birth canal of of like light, but it's pretty hard to figure out what you're. It looks kind of like a rib cage too. Yeah, and I will say too the house, whatever this house that they're in is. Uh, it's certainly an interesting design, and it's visually cool to like stays visually cool to look at. And there's something like maybe like a giant whale rib cage or some kind of giant rib cage out in the. Yeah, am I right? I, yeah, I was thinking that was supposed to show how far in the future it is. Maybe like this at one point was an ocean, and now there's a giant whale carcass out there. And I guess that's what it is. Yeah, uh, I was a little. Yeah, so there's some it. there's some cool visual choices. It started to make me think like maybe this will be fine, but. There was just so much that could have been cut, and then, like we said, just by the end, I, I just I left pretty disappointed. So I don't want to beat up on this movie too hard. It's it is an independent film, and it, it's a big swing. But um, what would you score this movie? I guess like a three, and that yeah. might that might be a little high. I think I I really didn't enjoy this. I think I I think I'm gonna go a, a, like like a two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'll give it credit where you know some some stylistic choices, but it, I needed a lot more in the plot department. So definitely, unfortunately, it's swing and a miss for me. So unfortunately, not the not the biggest fan of that. But yeah, stick around for the next video, guys. I hope I hope you guys got some enjoyment out of that, even if we didn't enjoy the movie. And uh, yeah, hit like below if you like this kind of thing. Share it with your friends. Uh, help help us out by hitting subscribe. Uh, we're trying to get to a hundred subscribers before the end of the year 16 and, away uh, 16 away that ain't too far you know maybe we'll move the goal posts up yeah we'll catch you guys in the next one and thanks for watching yeah, thanks we'll see you